Hello all, in the last session we have talked about the box plot and things like that. So in this session, the problem statement is as simple as that. Can you perform the sentiment analysis? Again, by the way, in context of the life cycle, what we are trying to do is, we are trying to do a data analysis where we have to shed light on the data preparation area. Again, it depends upon the problem that we are solving, where we can leverage various visualization or tools or packages so that I can make a meaningful conclusions from our data, right? This is what we typically follow in context of real world. Again, let me explain this word in a simple layman terms so that you will get a richer understanding of what the term itself is all about. Again, by the way, sentiment analysis is all about analyzing the sentiment or you can say as analyzing feelings or you can also say as analyzing the intentions. This is what in a nutshell sentiment analysis is all about. So let me attach a simple example so that it can connect things. So imagine while watching this course, let's say some of the users have or some of the students have shared a feedback as okay. Okay. The case studies are very simple, right? The case studies are simple. Case studies are simple and let's say one can understand the videos very easily, right? So imagine one of the student has shared this feedback. It means that this particular user, right? Let's say some user one has a positive intention or it has a positive sentiments toward the course, right? On the other hand, let's say one of the user or one of the student has shared a feedback. Imagine uh, unable to understand content, right? Let's say imagine to understand the content or let's say videos, it could be anything else. It means that let's say this, uh, this is posted by some user 2 or some student 2. It means that this particular user 2 have some negative sentiment regarding the course videos that I have. Again, in general, the sentiment value, oftentimes it is denoted as a polarity value. In general, it lies between a range of 0 to 1. You can say it is 0 to 1. More it will be close to zero. It means there's a higher chances that a particular feedback could be neutral, right? More it will be close to plus one. It means that it is a positive sentence. Similarly, if it has a range of minus one to zero, it means that more it will be close to minus one. It means that it is a negative sentence. If it is close to zero, it means it is a neutral sentence. It means that anyhow the polarity value will lie between a range of minus 1 to plus 1. Right? This is the range of a polarity value. Again, by the way, there are tons of packages that will help you a lot to perform the sentiment analysis. One of the package is my text blob. I can say pip install text blob. Right now, from the text blob package you have, you can say, okay, from this package, let me import a class or a function which is a text blob function, which will help you to perform the sentiment analysis. So, if I say that, let's say data of okay, the feature is a summary feature, right? Let me execute it. These are the various summary values we have. So, okay, let me consider, let's say, data of zeroth index. This is good quality dog food right so let me initialize the text blob i will say just pass this whole text just execute it so this is a text blob object if i need its sentiment i can call the sentiment attribute right if i will execute it you will end up getting polarity value and subjectivity value again polarity value makes a lot of sense over here so if you want to access this polarity you can say okay I need the polarity attribute very very straightforward just execute it you will end up getting a polarity value as 0.7 now you have to apply this whole idea right to my summary feature or you can say to each row of my summary feature again by the way this data itself is quite huge right because it is a real world data for those of you who don't have good specifications 
instead of considering this huge data to perform the sentiment analysis because sentiment analysis would take lot of resources you can consider some sample of data just for the sake of learning so let me show you how you can actually consider some sample of data you can say as okay i need let's say the first 50000 data points again by the way let me very first call a shape property just to get the dimensions right it says that i have that much data point let's say okay i need 50000 data point as a sample so let me store it in a sample object just execute it now i have to apply this idea right to this sample data frame on top of summary feature i can say as for right i can use the concept of for loop over here i can say as for text in sample of summary right now each of the text we have i can pass each of the text inside in my text blob let me pass each of the text now whatever polarity value it will return us again just like the way how it return over here whatever polarity value it will return us let me store it in a list so very first i have to define a blank list so that i can store each of the polarity value i will say as let me define a blank list right now whatever polarity value i have just append it in the polarity list i can think of calling this append function now let me explain you one more scenario again there could be a chance that this text could hold some blank values or it could hold some type of missing values right so this whole code right would return some kind of exceptions right it could return some kind of exceptions now you have to handle these exceptions because there is a chance that if you will execute these code right you might end up getting some kind of error or you might end up getting some kind of exceptions now you have to handle these exceptions that's where you can leverage a power of exception handling in python i can say as whatever lines of code right that i want to execute right again this is a code right this is a code which can return some kind of exception i can say whatever line of code which can return some kind of exception just mention it in the try block right now in order to handle the exceptions generated by this code just add a except block right and add new lines of code add some new lines of code which can handle these exceptions right this is the in general syntax or this is the in general approach how you can handle the exceptions in the real world of course using a try except block in python again by the way this is very very simple hence i can say as let me append a try block right let me append a uh, or let me add a new indentation otherwise you might end up getting a indentation error then if this code will return an exception just add a except block i will say as if i will end up getting exception i will append or i will insert zero in my list just execute this line of code now if i will call a len function on this polarity list it says that you have 50000 element inside this polarity list now let me insert this polarity list inside in my sample data frame i will say just define a new feature let's say the polarity and just assign the polarity values inside a polarity feature right if i will call let's say a head function on top of the sample data frame right you will notice that i have one of the very interesting feature which is a polarity feature now imagine i want to perform this sentiment analysis but let's say for those sentences which have a positive polarities or let's say i want to perform the sentiment analysis for those as well which have the negative polarity as well so that i can come up with a meaningful insight like okay which are the most frequent words used by the users for my positive feedbacks similarly which are the most frequent keywords right used by the customers for my negative feedback because it says that okay delicious keyword is used that much number of time if i can come up with a data like that i can okay i can mention okay these are the keywords where users are emphasizing more right this is the meaningful insight at the end of the day that i want to showcase to my client so very first i need two data frame for my negative polarity and for my positive polarity i can say that sample of 
polarity right the feature is a polarity if i will say less than zero if i will execute it wherever it is true it means that at that particular instance right this condition is true the moment i will pass this filter inside in my sample data frame if i will execute it this is the whole data frame for my negative polarity similarly if i want for the positive polarity i can say it must be greater than zero right so let me store it in let's say sample underscore negative right similarly you can just uh, copy the name and just paste over here this time let's say it goes for sample underscore uh, okay positive right just execute this line of code now if i'm going to say as okay just access the summary feature if i will execute it these are the various summaries right for a negative feedback shared by the users now from this if i need some of the keyword there are tons of ways that you can think of one of the way is you can think of leveraging one of the famous approach which is a counter approach so i can say that from the collections package we have let me import something known as a counter right if i say that counter of this again by the way if you want to read its documentation it is very very simple it is literally very very simple if i will execute it this is what you will end up getting for each of the text or for each of the keyword you will end up getting some count the moment i call the most underscore common function if i say okay i need the top 10 keywords if i will execute this line of code look at this this is what it is saying similarly if i want to do it for the positive feedback i have to just change the data frame object we have just executed and this is what you will end up getting again by the way for those of you who have any doubt please do let us know